Hey everybody. Happy day to you, whatever day it is. Today is Sunday here. It's like December 3rd or something like that. And it's a lazy Sunday morning and we've got peaches behind me. That's um, my son Harrison's cat. He's getting ready to take a nap, I feel like. Um, we're down two kittens this week. Two of the kittens that I was fostering went to be adopted yesterday at Petco at a big adoption event. I haven't heard how they did yet or if they got adopted yesterday. I'm sure they went fast because they were so cute. I do still have Sweetie here and he may show his face. He's, he's behind me somewhere over here playing with Fitz. Um, he has a little bit of an ear infection this week. So we're treating that and he's responding real well. So he won't be with us much longer either. Um, it is getting to be kind of the end of kitten season. It's, you know, the, the adoption event was kind of the last of the, the warm weather kittens and there'll be some that come into the shelter now and then. Um, but really until about Easter or so there, there won't be much in terms of kittens that need fostering, but, um, it, it was a fun season. We had a lot of little feet around the house. So welcome to stitchy tube number five. I'm having lots of fun still. I didn't um, film one last weekend, which was Thanksgiving weekend. I had just posted one a few days before Thanksgiving and I don't know, it just didn't seem like it was time. So I'm back and I'm ready to let you in on what I've been up to and teach you a little bit and talk about needlework. Uh, one of the things that I really like, here's, here's Sweetie right here. Let's show Sweetie off as long as he's right here. He's doing real good. Say my ear hurt a little bit and he's just been so great he's very very affectionate he's got pretty little white mittens on his feet hmm you say hello so it's fun to have them around I love it when you guys ask me questions and there were a number of really good questions uh, up in my last video I tried to respond to everybody or at least give you a thumbs up so if you have anything you want to say go ahead and say it but um, I'll answer a few of these questions right now. Jane Upchurch asked, um, what is the oldest sampler you've reproduced? And the oldest sampler I've reproduced is the Sarah Woodham sampler, and it actually hangs right here by my desk. Um, it is from 1770. And so the original is in, let's see, we don't wanna to get too much glare. The original is, ooh, we're getting lots of glare, is, um, not in the best shape. There's a lot of, you know, kind of patchy areas and missing thread and things. Um, this is a sampler that I've reproduced and I'll grab the reproduction sampler now too so you can kind of see what that looks like, but you're, it's hard to show those off, isn't it? So that one is from 1770, which think about it, what was happening here in 1776 in the United States, right? That was a long time ago, little Miss Sarah. Here's the reproduction sampler. And um, I got this one from Madalena over in the UK. It's a beautiful sampler. I loved the colors, kind of the strawberry red, um, beiges, uh, off white and greens, very, very pretty. Really what drew me to this one the most was the verse. Um, the verse is really about being thankful for what you have. And I'll, I'll read you the verse right now. This is really just, it's a great one. Whenever I take my walks abroad, how many poor I see. What shall I render to my God for all his gifts to me? Not more than others I deserve, but God has given me more. For I have food while others starve and beg from door to door. While others le early learn to swear and curse and lie and steal. Lord, I am taught thy name to fear and do thy holy will. Are these thy favors day by day to me above the rest? Then let me love thee more than they and try to serve thee best. I just think that's a really lovely sentiment. And um, so actually, since I thought, um, I thought since you asked that question that this might be a good giveaway for this week. So this week, the person who wins the giveaway for this video is going to win a copy of this sampler chart that I recreated. It comes with comments about the original sampler and of course the chart. It is stitched in either hand-dyed silks um, or DMC or sampler threads. I've got it three different ways just for whatever you like to do. I did stitch it in over-dyed hand-dyed silks because um, that's this, the original really looked like it was stitched in, well of course it was stitched in hand-dyed threads, but they have that kind of slightly variegated look to them. So anyway, you'll win a copy of this chart and also, <gasps> what, thread heaven, 
I, um, I'll talk about it in a minute, but I went to a quilt, local quilting store here yesterday to get some fabric to finish um, a project. And they had five Thread Heaven, just hang in there, just hang in there. And guess who bought them all? <laughs> I did. <laughs> Cause I thought, hey, if I don't use them, I, I'm gonna know somebody who's just dying to get them. Don't let the quilters all have them. So anyway, you're gonna get a Thread Heaven and Sarah Woodham. And then the way to um, sign up for this one, don't say uh, enter me in the giveaway. Let me know if you could, if you could spend a week in, during any time in history or in the future, where would you like to go? Would you like to go a thousand years in the future? Would you like to go to the 1500s? Would you like to go to the Victorian era? Would you like to go back to the 1950s? Um, what, what era would you love to just spend a week there, just seeing everything there was to see and you know, trying the food and wearing the clothes and seeing the sights and talking to people? That's kind of fun. Okay, and you'll be entered in this and I will do a random giveaway um, right before I take my next video. So I don't know when it'll be, just enter. And even if the drawing has already finished, go ahead and tell me when you would like to try living for a week. It's still fun to answer the question even if the giveaway is over. Okay, so that was a good question. Lisa Roskam asked me about Witchell Linen. Um, last time I showed a Christmas stocking that I was working on, for my nephew Noah, and um, I, I said that I was stitching it on Witchell, I think it's dark chocolate linen. And she said, uh, do you wash it first? It seems stiff. And yes, the, the Perman linens that are sold by Witchell Imports are a little bit more stiff. Um, the holes are also a little more prominent. The threads are thinner than you'll see on the Zweigert linens. It doesn't make it a bad linen. It makes it just a different linen. And um, I stitch in hand. And so sometimes a little bit stiffer linen is kind of nice because it's got some body to it, you know, and isn't just kind of laying limp in my hands. And so I don't wash, I don't generally wash my, my fabric first. You can wash it first. I've used, you know, just like baby shampoo or a little bit of gentle shampoo or even a little dish soap and just kind of lukewarm water and swish it around you know, kind of get some of the sizing out. The sizing is what causes that stiffness. But you'll find that if you work with Witchell linens or the Perman linens, that while you're working with them, they will loosen up and, and get more kind of pliable and softer to the touch. Um, it can be stiff, yes, but it's that's not necessarily a bad thing. The only um, fabric I really have ever, I like, I like a lot of different kinds of fabric. Jobelin has always been a tricky one to me. It's a very, very soft, even weave fabric. And I think it's, it's partly, you know, like a poly blend kind of something. And it's, it's a very drapey, loose fabric. And as someone who stitches in hand, that one is very challenging to work on. And I'm gonna share a piece in a little bit, show you something that I did on Jobelin. Okay, so that was that question. Uh, next, Cheryl Brumbaugh said, I love the strawberries. I showed um, the strawberries that I keep in this shaker box over my shoulder. She said, are they hard to make? And no, they're actually really not hard to make. Uh, I, pulled, I pulled the book that I got the instructions out of. Let me show mine first. So these are mine, how mine turned out. I did little, you know, just kind of pin, pin cushiony sized ones. And they're just little wool. I used Weeks Dye Works hand dyed wools. And the nice thing about using those is they don't, they really don't fray. And so like the, the leaves and things, you can cut a shape and it pretty much holds its shape. It's not like it's all gonna, you know, kind of unravel and fall apart. I had bought these at market a few years ago. And these were actually made by Stacy Nash. She had made some of these and I think she made some pairs too that she was selling in her booth. And I loved them, aren't they beautiful? And I just keep them in a little box. I think they're so neat. And I believe she stuffs hers with sawdust. But if you would like to learn how to make these strawberries, I would like to recommend her book, My Name is Lydia, Inspirations from a Schoolgirl Sampler by Stacy Nash. This came out a few years back and it's got some beautiful, um, here I'll just share a few pages, some beautiful projects in it. Um, some of which are based on an antique sampler. And the photography is really gorgeous. And it's just really just a neat, neat book. There you can see the berries. So 
Um, let's see, I've got the page marked in here somewhere. Slipper and large strawberry pin keep. So there's that one. I think she has patterns for a large one and for a small one. Let's see if I can find it. No. Let's see. Well, there's the pair. So you can learn to make a pair. And there they are. There you go. So that's going to be in this book. It's a lovely little book and it's still available and it's, it's uh, got a lot of great things. It's perfect for any sampler lovers library, but you can learn how to make them there. They, they're not difficult. I made probably 45 of them in, oh, definitely less than a day. I mean, it was probably, I don't know, a number of hours, but I just, once you, you kind of get cranking and you get the, get the hang of it, they really just assembly lined it and it was pretty quick. So no, they're not difficult to make. Try making one. Okay. Primitive Stitcher uh, had a good question. She asked, on antique samplers, how many strands are typically used? Meaning how many, how many strands of threads did the stitchers use when they were stitching their samplers? Remember, a lot of antique samplers were stitched on very fine linen. 40 count, 45 count, 50 count, 55 count, 60 count, very, very fine linen. So of course, those, it's one strand. And really most, most samplers that I've seen, it's one strand. I think that, you know, we as stitchers, as modern stitchers, we, you know, you're, it's like, oh, two strands, three strands, four strands. I've, I've stitched with all six strands before. You know, you get some of that seven count clostern or whatever. I think they would just be like, what? But you, you know, if you stitch with two strands, you'll use twice as much thread. They, they were having to be very frugal because all of this stuff was not machine made. This was all hand dyed, handmade, very expensive supplies. And so they really stitched with one strand. And another thing that they did is um, they stitched to the edges of their fabric. They got a piece of fabric that was just a little bit bigger than the piece they were going to stitch. They, it wasn't this four inches on every side for framing kind of thing, right? Because it was it was hand loomed linen and it was it was expensive and it was difficult to make. So um, typically one strand, and you know that's that's what they did. And I think one strand looks really nice even on 32 count. Sometimes if you're stitching a sampler on 28 count or maybe a 14 count Ada, you're not going to get as good a coverage with one strand, and so you definitely could bump up to two. But don't be afraid to use one strand on 32 count. It gives it a really soft look. You and I and friends, when they would stitch on 32 count, they often use just one strand and it looks really nice that way. Uh, you don't have to worry about your, you know, railroading or having your threads kind of spin around on each other. It just, they lay really nice. Okay, Lisa Blanco asked, what is a marking sampler? A marking sampler is a type of sampler that was done typically at you know someone's home it would have been a very simple type of a sampler used to help girls practice stitching letters and numbers usually for marking the household linens and things um, once again linens were difficult to make expensive treasured valued and if they were going to be sent out for the wash they didn't want their family linens to get mixed up with somebody else's linens and so a lot of times they would cross stitch or embroider initials on the linens to indicate which family they belonged to. And you can still find you, pretty inexpensively, you can find on eBay or Etsy um, and even, you know, look at your local antique shops, linens where the it's all that's on there is somebody's initials. And that's what the marking samplers would have been used for. If you want to find some information about marking samplers and stitch some. I recommend this book, Historic Samplers. This is by Pat Ryan of r, &R Reproductions and Alan Bragdon. And I don't know what year this book came out. It's been a while. Um, and it, it's definitely not in print anymore. It's from 1992. So, so it's not quite as old as I thought it was. But um, I found this one on Amazon and I bought it used and I, I didn't pay that much for it. I maybe paid you know, $5 or $10 or something like that. But it's it's really kind of a cool little book. Here's an example of, of a marking sampler here, and this is the reproduction, Sophia Waters. And so you can see it's just mainly letters and numbers, 
and just kind of that first you know trial with a with a needle here's another one by Mary Jane Hills and this one's got a pretty ribbon border around it but you can see that's that's typically what a marking sampler looks like it's usually numbers letters and then you can see there are some just simple dividing bands and that's about it I this year got a chart that I had had remembered from a while back um, by Chessie and me called the Mary Holt sampler and um, this one is really pretty I've seen the model done up and it's it's really really pretty it's done in silks and so that's one I actually a marking sampler I have on my list of things I'd like to do and that one should still be available too uh, maybe just ask at your local shop but it's very very pretty so that's what a marking sampler is if you'd like to try stitching a marking sampler, but you don't have access to that book or that chart, Blackbird Designs has a free pattern of a little marking sampler called Now I Know My ABCs. And I will put the link below so you can click on it. And it's just a tiny little marking sampler stitched in some overdyed threads. It's very cute. It would stitch up really fast as an ornament or a small or a little gifty for somebody. And so go ahead and check that out too and you can try stitching a little marking sampler for yourself okay all right what am i all into this week i am having a good time watching other people's floss tube videos and finding out things that you guys are all into some of you have, have taken over the the question and letting us know things that you enjoy and i'm all into is just things that i am interested in generally or things that i've recently discovered that may or may not have to do with needlework and so here's what I'm all into this week special K nourish apple raspberry almond multi-grain flakes with quinoa it's this is good cereal I just found it at Target and I like special K anyway it's kind of just crunchy and light and you know if I need a snack at night a lot of times I'll just have a little bowl of special K but um, I love dried apples, and this one has little bits of dried raspberries, which um, are kind of tart, and then it's got kind of these little clusters in it. It's not a real strong flavored cereal, but it's just really nice, and I would recommend it. Give it a go. It's delicious. Um, one other thing that I'm into this week is checking the fridge and the dryer for kittens. <laughs> I don't know what you do at your house, but I've been fostering kittens for you know, I don't know, six years or some, I think, I don't know, six years maybe. And um, even sometimes when there aren't kittens here, I'm continually, like if I shut the fridge, I'll be like, open it back up, make sure there isn't a kitten in there. Occasionally I've opened it and yes, while I was closing it, a kitten did duck into the fridge. And yes, I have pulled kittens out of the dryer before. And it is my fear that I will freeze and or dry a kitten. And I have not done that. But um, it's just kind of funny that that's part of my life is just making sure that animals have not crawled into things that are dangerous. <laughs> One uh, thing I got all into this week was cleaning out my medicine cabinet. I, I, uh, my feet hurt. They hurt. They were feeling better and now they hurt again. And it's just my lot. And it's fine. It's what it is. But I went to the medicine cabinet to find something to take to just kind of take the edge off the pain. And I was like, oh, gosh, this all kinds of stuff in here and I'm start pulling out you know bottles and it's like what was this for I don't remember this one and you know some of it was over-the-counter stuff and some of it was prescription stuff and I found something that like expired in 2012 so I just took a good 15 minutes and went through all the medicine and checked for expiration dates and I got rid of quite a bit there was when was the last time you did it probably should check and see maybe you're better about it than I am but I guess it had been a while I thought I was better about it but I'm not but I'm up to date now nothing in my cabinet is going to make anybody sick or clutter up the space anymore okay another thing that I am into is Vincent van Gogh and it's Vincent van Gogh to, to a lot of people I think you really are supposed to say Vincent van Gogh, Gogh. he is phenomenal I love Vincent he his paintings are amazing and colorful and full of texture and they're vibrant and they're full of life and they're just interesting and he just was a one of a kind when you see a vincent van gogh painting you're like yeah that's i know who that is that's vincent he's got his style um i have a number of books about him and i've watched a number of documentaries in fact um benedict cumberbatch was played vincent in a documentary that I think you can find on YouTube. But he just was such an interesting person and I think a lot of times people kind of simplify Vincent and um, 
you know, that, oh, that he was a painter and he was crazy and, you know, he was a crazy painter. But he was so much more um, complex than that. And yes, there was mental illness and yes, he had his troubles and worries, but um, he really had a lot of clarity as far as how he felt about his art and what he wanted to accomplish with it and what his goals were. And if you'd like to really get an interesting perspective on Vincent, um, I recommend this book called Van Gogh's Letters. And this, these are letters that he wrote, you know, a lot of them to his brother Theo, who bankrolled Vincent's life pretty much, you know, afforded him the ability to to basically live as an artist and study as an artist. The cool thing is, is not only do you get to read the letters, but you get to see a lot of the letters. And you can see that he, a lot of times he would sketch, um, you know, he would, he would send sketches with the letters so his brother could see what he was working on. And then as the book goes on, you know, things get more, look at how beautiful this is. Oh my Lord, he was talented. Um, and then it just, you know, kind of goes into where you're getting to see paintings and sketches of paintings and things. So it's fun visually. Visually, it's a fun book. Um, but it's such an interesting book to get his insight. He really wanted his art to make people feel. He wanted people to, to feel emotion when they looked at his paintings. And I think he definitely succeeded. I think anybody who has seen, if you've seen, ever seen one in person, I've seen a number of his, his works in person. They're just like kind of jaw-dropping. They're, you know just the texture and the vibrancy and there's just you know so much movement um he just he really was a one-of-a-kind dude and i i just i adore his work and you know god rest his soul he was an amazing person so that's i'm all into vincent okay last thing that i'm all into this week is the amazon wish list and um if you i i shop on amazon we have prime accounts um part of the problem with us with holidays and birthdays and things is that we moved away from everyone that we knew. <laughs> so 10, 11 years ago. So I don't live by my, my family. We don't live by Steve's family. Nobody lives here. Um, I have friends that I've made here. Um, but anytime that it's a holiday like Christmas, you know, we've had to, you know, buy gifts, wrap them, package them, drive them to the post office and get them to where they need to go. And now I have five nephews and two nieces, and one on Steve's side and one on my side. And it's I've, last year I talked my sister and, and her family and my brother's family into making wish lists on Amazon so that I could know what the kids wanted. That way they could look for themselves to see things that were fun and then I would know what they wanted and then I just pick it and write a note and I ship it to them and and they wrap them for me and put them under the tree and it's really great because it's something I, that I know for sure the kids are would be excited to get but it's fun for me to shop that way too uh, in a lot of ways it's like I don't know if you all remember the the Sears catalog or the JC Penney catalog we would get those catalogs you know back in the 70s and there would be like a, a section of toys and one oh my gosh one of the things I totally wanted was a rock tumbler I was sure that I could polish the gravel in our flower beds to be amazing jewelry, <laughs> like really cool, pretty, shiny rocks. And uh, that never happened. I never got a rock tumbler. As a parent, I now understand why. I don't know that I'd really like to listen to rocks tumbling and tumbling and tumbling. And so we never, never got one of those. I also always wanted those flocked horses. Do you remember those that were, was like a, you know, just a horse. They would have all different kinds of horses and things. And, um, they had different colors of horses and different kinds, and I just thought those were so cool. Um, but anyway, it's I, I love the Amazon wish list, and my my um, siblings also do it, and my in in laws do it, my husband's parents do it. It's great because sometimes it's hard to know what to buy for someone, and this way you know, and you make a list for yourself too, and it's kind of fun to just look around and find fun things. Anyway. That's what I'm all into this week. So let's talk about whips. Um, I have a couple of things I've been working on and I do have something that I finished too, which I already mentioned. But um, I mentioned last video that I was super into sparkly things. And I have at home here a Mill Hill kit that I bought at the Silver Needle when I went there for a retreat once. 
It is Gingerbread House. And you know, it's cute. It's cute. But um, Lindy at the Silver Needle had all of these done up as um, pillows on fabric. And then she has them hanging by the kits. And you, it's to see them in person, they're amazing. And they've got all kinds of beads and sparkly things on them. And so I've made pretty good progress just in this week um, working on this little gingerbread house. And look at how cute that is. That's pretty darn cute. And I'm just like trying to whip my way through the floss because I want to get to the beads. I want to get to the beading and the sparkly part. But really, you need to finish all the cross-stitching first because once you start putting beads on there, you have to work a little bit more slowly. And um, it's just easier to catch your thread on the beads as you're stitching. And so I'm getting all the cross stitching done first, but it's turning out really cute. I just had a piece of 30 count something in my stash that looked kind of natural slash gingerbready. And um, I'm having a lot of fun with this. It's very, very cute. It's very Christmassy. It's, a, you know, a lot brighter and more, I don't know, just colorful than a lot of the things that I stitch, but that's okay. It's fun to do things that are different. One of the things that was funny about this kit, I, I started it at my friend Jennifer's house last week is um, the chart is kind of difficult to read. You know, sometimes you get a chart and like all the symbols are kind of the same tone, like value. Um, it's really tricky to chart, but you know, looking at your charts, you'll recognize things like black is often a all the way filled in black square, because then when you look at a chart, you can really see where the black goes and it's a very dark value. And then white is typically what? Like a tiny dot or a little dash. And for some reason on this chart, white is a crescent moon. And that makes me crazy. <laughs> and I don't know why. It just made it, it just, it's, it's just difficult to, it's difficult to see it all. So, um, but it's really, these kits are great. They come with everything you need. The beads, the butt, it comes with a ceramic button, the chart. It came with a piece of perforated paper. It comes with a pile of floss. You can see it over my shoulder, right over there, that pile of floss everything that you need to do it. And so I'd really recommend, you know, doing a Mill Hill kit. I haven't done one for a while and I'm having a really fun time. So that's one of my whips. And then um, I'm going to save this last one for the end because Jennifer's Christmas gift is what it is. And she likes to watch my videos. So Jennifer, I'm going to leave this until the end and then you're going to have to just like log out and um, not watch the end. But I finished Noah's stocking and it turned out super stinking cute. Here it is. Hold it back so you can see the beauty that is a finished project that has been going on and on and on. And there it is, it's done. So this is a birds of a feather design. It is a chart that is still available. Yes, it has some cat hairs on it but it is done. And this is why I went to the quilting store um, yesterday to find fab, um, backing fabric. I thought I had a lot of quilting fabric. I didn't have anything that worked with a stocking. The colors really are pretty unusual. It's kind of that minty, you know, greens. And then the red is not a red red, it's kind of an orange red. And so I didn't, I really didn't have anything. I had a hard time deciding what to, to get. And I, I got this chocolate brown with the white little white lines, which kind of reminded me of like a blizzard. And then I got for the lining, I did, uh, you know, kind of that fiery red. Um, and then I just made a tab out of that, out of the blizzard fabric. But isn't that cute? I think it turned out really, really nice. I hope Noah loves it. I did end up stitching his name at the top, um, just in back stitch with th three strands, I think. Um, I just literally took the chart and wrote his name in cursive and then just followed it like I was following backstitching. It was, it was tricky, but it was the, you know, that's what I could figure out how to do. And I, I think it turned out really cute, but I'm very proud of it. I hope Noah loves it. It was a labor of love. There are many thousands of stitches in this. You got to figure every one of these little squares is eight by eight, which means there are 64 crosses, which means there's 128 stitches every single square. So if you think about just the squares, there's just thousands of stitches in this piece, but it was very fun to do. Would highly recommend it. Love it on this dark chocolate fabric again by Witchell Imports. It's a 32 count. I stitched it in the called for Weeks Dye Works. Um, and then there were a few DMCs. 
The only thing I changed is that this kind of minty light green, I used the DMC, which was 954 instead of the um, called for weeks because it looked too stripy to me. I didn't, I didn't care for the stripiness of it. But there, that's it. Super glad that's done. I'll be mailing that off soon. Okay, and then that was that was my that was my big finish this this last week. But I thought I'd share a Christmas piece that I finished from years ago, years gone by. This was another very long term project. I believe I stitched on this for you know like nine or ten years, and I would put it down sometimes for two or three years, and then I'd be like, okay, let's get back at it. I do remember going to the Nordic Needle and picking out the fabric, which was a twenty eight count Jobelin denim blue. Okay, let's see if we can get a good, that's not, okay. So this is called The Pageant Kings, and it was in Treasures Magazine, which was a wonderful magazine that only lasted six issues. It was the saddest thing when I got the note that they weren't going to be making it anymore. It was a very high quality cross-stitch and needlework magazine, and I'll show you an issue here in just a minute, but I just am giving you a minute to, to look and oogle and ogle. So this was a lot of work. There are like 78 colors of DMC and there's, you know, I don't know, a dozen metallics and like six different colors of beads. And there's a lot of backstitching and there was a lot of blending. And it was on this 28 count Jobelin, which is a very loose, um, a very loose weave fabric and very drapey and like I said I stitch in hand so that was a real trick for me to oh, that was a real trick for me to stitch on um, this is the magazine and it was from their premiere issue and I just checked on eBay right before I started filming and I saw a couple of copies of this available right now for three dollars and shipping so if you're interested I think there were five or six copies available on eBay right now, as of right now, um, and, and other issues too. Remember, there were only six issues. I have all six. So this was, this was the chart, the Pageant Kings, and it is amazing. It's very, very pretty. But do you ever stitch a piece and you've worked on it so long that even now I look at it and I'm like, oh, that was, <laughs> that was a lot of work. That was so much work. And it kind of, at points got to be sort of drudgery just because I, I wanted to be done. I don't know. It was, it was a lot of hard work. It was a, they, they rated it a four star project, meaning for, you know, kind of advanced stitchers. It was just, it was, it was a lot of work, but anyway, it, it is very, very pretty. But, um, I, I was thumbing through just this copy and look at this cool, this is about Candace Kling. And I think she's still online somewhere, but she made, used to make candy out of ribbon. How cool is that? But this whole magazine is great. Lots of, lots of great projects, things that still are very pretty today. So if you, have, if you don't have copies of this, this magazine, go out and find some. You can definitely find them on eBay. It's from 1992-ish. So it's, gosh, I mean, that's what, 25 years already, right? Oh my Lord. So go find them because it's, it's a great magazine. So that is a finished project. All right, with the new month, I'm gonna start a new project. I, I did finish a couple of projects last month. I finished that little Prairie Schooler ornament. I finished an ornament for the retreat. Um, what did I finish at the retreat? Oh, I finished the Prairie Schooler. Then I finished Noah's stocking, but I haven't drawn any new starts. I did start that Mill Hill kit. But anyway, so here we go. This is going to be my new project for December. And this is, oh, Carriage House Samplings. So I'm going to start a Carriage House Samplings chart. I have a lot of her charts. They're very, very pretty. And I'm, I'm sure that I will find something grand. But that's exciting. That means I get to go look through my stuff. Okay, so that's my new start. Uh, ten, ten, ten things to do while you're stitching. Uh, it's fun to stitch, and I think a lot of people, when they look at somebody stitching, they think, oh, that person is totally focused on that one thing. And I, they don't realize that um, people who are stitching can multitask. 
And I know a lot of people who are stitchers love to multitask and get multiple things done at one time. And I certainly do. And it's, you can stitch and do something else. So here are 10 things to do in random order, 10 things that you can do while you're stitching. Number one, put your feet up. This is super important to me. I need to put my feet up every day because my feet hurt and I've, I've pounded the pavement all day at my job, up and down stairs, walkie, 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 come home. It feels great to put them up on that ottoman and stitch and just let my feet rest and heal. So I think, um, you know, also just in terms of, you know, putting your feet up, just resting, like we're busy people. I think if you ask most stitchers like, oh, how's life right now? And everybody goes, I'm so busy. Isn't it nice just to sit and do something quiet? Just put your feet up and just stop. Um, I think that's important. Another thing, number two, that you can do while you stitch is listen to music. And I'm just gonna say cats love Nora Jones. If you have any Nora Jones and you have cats, just notice what they do. If, if, I, if everybody here is crazy and meowing and hissing and slapping and swatting and whatever, I put on Nora Jones and the whole house goes, they just like all curl up, take a nap. I don't know what it is about Nora, but they, they love it. But listening to music is um, a good way to do something while you're stitching. Watching floss tube is something you can do while you stitch too. I love to do that. It's like being at a retreat almost. It's like being with, you know, sitting with another st stitching friend. And um, it's fun to listen to people talk about needlework and talk about their projects. And then if they start showing things off, you can look up, you know, put your stitching down for a minute, look up, see what they're up to, and then go back to stitching. So I think, you know, that's got to be one of the reasons that floss tube is, is so popular is just that it is like having company while you stitch. Thing number four that you can do while you're stitching is chat with friends. And today, at uh, in a couple hours, I'm going to be going over to my friend Jennifer's house. We're having a monthly get together that we have with our craft. We call it our crafting group. Um, and we're everybody just brings something they're working on. And so some people bring knitting, crocheting, uh, arts and crafts, needlework. You know, a lot of it is is cross stitch, but people can bring other projects that they're working on too. And so we just sit and chat and nibble on snacks and look at each other's progress and just have a good time. And so, and, and that's one of the reasons too that I think retreats are so fun is that you can chat and learn about people and, and make new friendships while you're doing needlework. Um, another thing you can do, thing number five, is spend time with your pets. And that's, I do that all the time when I'm stitching. Um, this chair back here, when I take the time to, to park it, and put my feet up and turn on my stitching lamp and get my needlework out. I'll have cats across the back of me, on the arms of the chair, on my lap, resting nearby. Um, and it's just nice. They, they like the warmth that I'm giving them and I like the comfort that they're giving me. And I'm not playing with them, I'm not talking to them. We're just spending time together and enjoying each other. And it's just, it's very nice. So if you, got a dog or uh, cats or if you have a bird or whatever just sometimes it's just nice just to be with your creatures thing number six that you can do is think and I know you all do this and it's one of the things that I wonder when I stitch antique samplers is what were these girls thinking about because that's what I do when I stitch is I think a lot I think my way through worries um, I think my way through the week you know I plan schedules I dream, daydream, I remember things, I just let my mind wander, and I think that's good for you. I think it's good to give yourself time just to think, and if you're in a, a project where all you're doing is filling a big area, it's pretty easy to do, to just, to just kind of go on autopilot and just sit and let your mind do what it's going to do and just let it kind of run its course, and that's a good thing to do. Another thing you can do is listen to books on tape, listen to podcasts, listen to talk radio. A lot of times I'll watch documentaries on YouTube because I find that um, I, can, I can watch a documentary and not have to be paying super close attention to what's happening on the screen. But then if something interesting or important comes up, I can put my stitching down and, and look and then go back to it. Um, it's really hard to watch like a really involved movie to me while I'm stitching just because... Um, you get kind of sucked in and, and you get focused on the movie. 
But um, <laughs> like last week, I think I watched three or four documentaries about Dracula in a row. Not Dracula. Yeah, Dracula. You know, vampires. I, I, don't, it, I don't know how I got on it, but then my um, browser was on autoplay and it just kept playing. Here's another one. Here's another one. Here's another one. So I learned all about Dracula. But anyway, um, number eight is you can take a break. Um, I put take a break at work, but really you can take a break at home too. Sometimes you're doing something at home like you might be doing laundry and you're waiting for the dryer to finish. Oh, I think I've got 10 minutes left on the dryer. Let me sit down and just put in a few stitches. I get an hour break at work, which is, I usually bring my lunch. And um, so I'll sit and eat my lunch, which takes about 20 minutes. And then I'll use the rest of the time to just work on a project. But you can do it at home too. You know, you're waiting for the cookies or you're waiting for the the uh, flan or whatever that you're making. And um, just, you know, that little, those little intervals that you have between tasks that you're doing. Another thing that you can do, number nine, is pass idle time. Uh, I regularly take needlework with me. I just, I just pretty much always have a project in my bag. And so if I end up at the doctor's office and I'm waiting, I take my needlework out. If um, I'm traveling, I have a project with me and I'll stitch on a plane or I'll stitch in the terminal. Um, you, you do have downtime sometimes that there's really nothing you can do but wait. I wish sometimes that, you know, standing in line at the grocery store, I don't know, you can't do it, but you could do it, maybe. <laughs> you could do it. But passing idle time, uh, maybe you're traveling in the car and somebody else is driving, you can still talk to them, but you can get some stitching done too. Number 10 is just enjoy the craft. And I'm sure you catch yourself doing this sometimes, but just really enjoying, you know, the, the feel of it, the feel of the thread, the feel of the fabric, the little sound that thread makes as it's coming through the fabric, um, the shininess of the beads or the metallic or the way your stitches are looking on your fabric. Um, do you ever just like you're working on something and you just, and you just kind of like step back mentally and just look at it and you're like, oh my gosh, this is so beautiful. Just really, when you're stitching, take time to really just enjoy what you're doing. It's not a race. Um, it's, it's a process. And so, you know, I think, you know, if you talk to stitchers, a lot of us, and I've got some too, you've got projects that you've finished that you've never fully finished. You've never framed it or you've never done the finishing on them. Stitching is a lot about the journey. It's a lot about the, you know, finding the project, starting the project, working your way through it and really when you get to the end of a project it, it is a thing of beauty and it is it can be enjoyed but the the bulk of it for us stitchers is is in the time that we had with the project and so really I guess just just really just sit back and and when you're stitching just think about how much you enjoy what it is that you're doing okay um, who won the last drawing? It was Farm Girl. Hey, hey, hey. So she won um, Christmas is Coming, the chart, a skein of silk, and one of my little strawberries. And so Farm Girl, if you want to hit me up, send me a private message in YouTube here, and I will put those things in the mail for you. How exciting you won. She said, uh, the question was, why should you stitch a sampler? And she said that she loves stitching samplers because it's like a piece of history and that she often wonders what the girls' lives were like, the ones who stitched the samplers. And that was a common refrain. Do take time to read the comments that go along with my videos. It's always fun to see what people say um, uh, in their responses to my question for the drawing. It's really fun just to, to learn more about you guys too. Okay, a couple more things and then we'll be done. Um, like I mentioned, I'm going to Jennifer's today and we're doing... Um, our crafts and then we're we're doing our second annual booze exchange and last year we had before done ornament exchanges where people went out and bought an ornament and that's fun but last year I was like let's do a booze exchange and people were like oh that sounds kind of fun and they're just are kind of fun like holiday liqueurs and things and so um, everybody's bringing a bottle of booze um, 15 to 20 dollars and um so I'm taking taking a bottle of Kraken rum, which is nice if you like rum and Coke. It's very, very delicious. It gives it a little bit of a vanilla flavor. But it'll be fun to see what I get. We just draw numbers, and then everybody gets to take home a bottle of booze. And then um, another thing that Jennifer and I did is, uh, like a year ago, she got a deal on um, some 
like 25 slot paper mache drawer things at Hobby Lobby that, and she had a couple of them left. She made, um, you know, like 25 days of Christmas things for the kids and the family, but she had a couple left. She got them really cheap. So she gave me one and she had one and we're de we decorated them for each other and we're going to exchange today. And so then um, I'll show you mine. I think it turned out really, really cute. So this is, it's just a paper mache um, box and, and it came with all these little drawers. And so I wanted mine to look kind of like chalk, you know, cause that's the big thing right now. And um, I wanted it to, you know, I thought about covering like the fronts of the drawers with scrapbook paper and things, but I just thought this would be much sturdier and less likely to kind of get wonky. But um, here's how I did it. All I did was I got a charcoal colored craft paint, acrylic paint and painted the paper mache with that and it dried really fast this paper mache when you paint it it just whoosh, just sucks it in in the moisture and it's and it's done and then I got some chalk markers that I found in near the scrapbooking supplies and I did the different types of lettering and things on the drawers and then this morning I went back because I wanted it to look like things had been like erased on these boards and that things were written again so I um, took some kind of off-white paint and just kind of dry brushed um, dry brushed it with white to make it kind of look wispy and, and chalky. So that's what I did. And then in each drawer is a little stitching related thing. So, you know, stitching related little things. Um, so every one, every day is different and you get to open one a day and how fun is that? That's super fun. So I get mine today. I will tell you a funny story about mine. I was trying to do it like write the number you know, make the number, write the number, make the number, write the number, make the number, write the number, make the number. And I got down to the bottom, 20, 21. And then I got over to here and I was like, wait a minute, there's not going to be 25. And what I had done is I wrote the word 21 and then I made the word 21, <laughs> made it, you know, two. And this was, a, this was a one. So I was like, oh no, I've got two 21s. So my whole numbering system fell apart at the bottom. So I did 22, 23, and then I made this one into a four. And then I did 25 as, you know, the little hash marks. But isn't that fun? It's kind of cute. And nothing in here was like super expensive. Some of it was, um, you know, just stuff I found at Hobby Lobby and with the Christmas stuff, you know, trims and things. And there's some threads. And anyway, I don't want to spoil it, but there's just, you know, cute. And it, it did not take that long. It was very fun. And I think they're selling these again this year. Just so you know, just so you know. So there's that. And then um, I didn't get any stash this week and that's fine. Don't need to every week. But I, so I thought, well, it's kind of fun to share like other things from your stash. So I just went and randomly, blindly picked out five things from my chart bins just to see things that I could share with you, things that I have. And so this one is um, Turtles All the Way Down by Ink Circles and it's super cute. And my son Harrison is way into turtles and he picked this out at Stitchville when we were there two summers ago. And he was like, oh, I would love this um, sometime. And so I'll stitch it sometime for Harrison, but um, it's very cute. I was just, before I was filming this video, I was reading on the back what the story is. And you know, in long, long time ago, when people didn't understand how the world worked, they had this theory that the flat earth was held up by an animal. And a lot of times she said it was an elephant or a turtle. And then people would say, yes, but what's holding up the turtle? And then they would say another turtle. Well, what's holding up that turtle? Another turtle. Well, what's holding up that turtle? Another turtle. So that's why it's called turtles all the way down. But isn't that cute? It's just stitched in DMC on um, a banding by Wichelt Imports. But you could definitely do those as ornaments too. Wouldn't they be cute? Very cute chart. Okay. Salty Halloween. This isn't really a cross stitch chart. It is like what peyote beading beat. It's a beading project and it came with all of the, the beads and things. And I got this um, at the salty yarns when I went there to teach at a retreat and I saw they had a model of it stitched and it's really, really cute. And I would like to try it. I've, I haven't done anything like that, but I don't, I don't feel like it would be rocket science. The instructions I'm sure are very good. They look like they are. So isn't that pretty? A little fob. Um, I have this one, this oldie but goodie, a fine collection by Barb and Alma of Blackbird Designs. This is a book that came out many a year ago. Let's see if it says 
2002. Okay, so it's only 15 years old. Um, very, very cute. And it's, it's seasonal projects. And the one that I like the best oop, 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 is this one, which is on the cover. Isn't that pretty? I would love to do that. But they have each page is, um, they have like the pages for the month where you could almost use it like a calendar. And then there are a lot of different kind of just seasonal type designs in here. This one is no longer available, but I think, you know, if, if you really put your mind to it, you could probably find a copy of it maybe on eBay. You might pay a pretty penny for it though, but it is, it is cool. I do collect these books as they come out because they do go out of print and they're always great. Um, this one is called Gobble by Bent Creek. And I stitched this once upon a time over one thread and it ended up on a round robin that I think I gave to someone as a gift. But it is so cute that I should stitch it again. Bent Creek did a number of these patterns where it was, um, you know, the alphabet, but then there was a word hidden in each one. And look at that funny turkey. He's getting blown around by the wind. And it's not, you know, not a huge, huge project. It would stitch up real fast. Very, very cute. All right, and the last thing I pulled randomly out of my stash was this chart called Luna. It's a kit, actually, by the Scarlet Letter. And this is, um, it's taken from a 17th century English tent stitch picture. And I have the soul one, too, which is the sun. And I just love the old, tiny look of that. But it came with the fabric and the silks. And I got this when I went and visited the Scarlet Letter, and I talked about that in another video, I think. Um, but it was, I think, you know, at the time I maybe paid $16 for it. I'm not sure if this is still available. It might be if you look at the Scarlet Letter. It's scarlet-letter.com. And um, it's really a cool, cool little kit. Haven't done it yet, but doesn't mean I won't. Okay. So I think I've worked my way through just about everything, except I wanted to show off what I'm working on for Jennifer for Christmas. Um, Jennifer, this is a good time for you to duck out. You don't want to spoil the surprise. Just go ahead and not you, stop watching. Okay. So um, this is, Jennifer and I last year, we're going to stitch samplers for each other. We were inspired by Paulette Stewart, who um, she and her mother stitch things for each other at Christmas a lot of times and they do samplers and then it's just, they get them framed and then it's like this big surprise. Well, Jennifer and I did it one time. And then last year we were like, should we do it again? And we were like, yes. And then neither one of us finished the sampler. So this year we were like, are we still on? Are we gonna finish what we were working on? And we decided, yes, we were. And so I've been working on Jennifer's and it's not that it was super huge or anything and it is really fun and pretty. It's just, I hadn't finished it. And I'm gonna hold this behind it because the fabric is kind of, kind of thin. Um, it is Kathy Barrick's, why can't I not be straight? Kathy Barrick's, um, oh, what is it called? It's a mystery what it's called. It's one of Kathy Barrick's pieces and it's relatively new and you can find this on her Etsy store. Um, I am stitching it in the DMC flosses except for the deer. I um, <clears throat> didn't have 610 DMC in stock <laughs> here at the house. And so I went to Michael's, they were out. I looked at Walmart, they didn't carry it. I looked at Michael's, they didn't have it. Nobody had 610 when I was starting this one. So I said, you know what, I'm just gonna, I just picked out an over dyed thread um, that was a limited edition, I believe. And I decided to use that just for the deer. So there's just the deer is stitched in over dyed, which I like that look. A lot of times on these antique samplers, some of the thread looks hand dyed, but then some of it looks pretty solid. And so I like that kind of mix of kind of solid colors and hand dyed colors. Now I don't, when I stitch with hand dyed threads that are variegated, I do not finish each cross stitch at a time. I go all the way to the end and all the way back and all the way to the end and all the way back. And I used to do one stitch at a time, but there are two things I don't like about that. One is that sometimes it can make things look really stripy where you see definite starts and stops to color and um, it, it just can be kind of jarring and a little bit too stripy for my taste. The other thing is that it slows down your stitching time. It also uses more thread, but um, it just makes it, it just takes longer. And I like to stitch fast. And so um, to me, I like the way this deer looks because he looks kind of heathered, you know, kind of wooly almost. But I think he's really cool. 
So I don't have too much left here. There's like a big, big. Actually, I've got. I think I've got the chart over here. And we can see. Okay, it's called "And Heaven and Nature Sing." And there it is. So you can see, I'm really. I don't have too much left. I've got some motifs left, but that's gonna be great. That's gonna be great, and I hope she really likes it. But I'm on, I'm on course to get it finished by Christmas. No problem, no problem at all. And it's been fun to do. So I highly recommend it. That is a relatively new chart. I think there are two other ones now that are kind of in that series. There's one with a female deer with maybe a baby deer. And then there's one with, oh, she did a swan this year, I think, that would look really nice hanging with the other two. Anyway, it's been, it's been fun to do, and I highly recommend the, the design. Okay, that is all I got to say this week. I blabbed on and on for almost an hour, and I'm sure you're sick of me, and I'm sick of me too, so I'm going to say goodbye. Thanks so much always for your comments, your questions, your likes, um, and thanks for your dislikes too. <laughs> I seem to get one dislike per video, and you know what? When you dislike a video, it's the same as liking it because it just bumps you up in the search results. Um, Thanks for your kind comments. I just am sometimes like, I literally will just sit and read comments and go, oh, like it's, people are so nice and you don't have to do that. And so I appreciate that you take the time to be nice. That means a lot to me. Nice people are important to me. And so when you're nice to me, I appreciate it. And I recognize it as, as you having a generous spirit and being just a good steward and a good person of the world, trying to spread positivity and kindness and joy. And that's, a good thing to do. There's not enough of that in the world, not nearly. And so it, it's, that's great. And, and, um, I know that it means a lot to other people to get comments too. And I do try to comment on other videos and say what I liked about things people were doing or try to be helpful or ask questions. Cause it just, it takes a lot of time to make these videos. You have to prep and then you shoot them and then you edit them and then you wait a long time for them to load. And then, you know, you go through and you try to answer questions. And so, um, it's, you know, it's very nice when you, take a minute to just say something. That's all, that's all we need. So um, thanks for that. And it's been fun to spend time with you. Good luck with your stitching projects. Good luck with your Christmas projects. Um, let's all get our projects done for Christmas. And I hope that um, your hands can be nimble and your eyes can be true and um, your heart can be full. All right, until next time, see you later. Take care.